Engineering, bending science to man's desires. For three centuries, that's what British engineers have done, revolutionizing and shaping the world with their limitless imagination and skill. Since the Industrial Revolution, trailblazing inventions like Richard Trevithick and George Stevenson's steam train and railway have radically transformed life. Suddenly, the world opened up. With cars, too, the British were among the pioneers, designing one of the first internal combustion engines. It was the beginning of what would eventually become a lucrative new industry and a major British export. Another British engineering success story. The jet engine invented by former RAF pilot Sir Frank Whittle in 1932. Nearly 30 years later, British engineers designed the iconic Harrier, the first and only truly successful vertical and short takeoff aeroplane. Engineers built Britain. Uh, they built our transport systems, they provided our energy, uh, our hospitals, our infrastructure. Unlike our great forebears of Telford and Stevenson and Whittle, we need to engineer the future. Of course there have been and continue to be more recent British engineering breakthroughs too. The first supersonic commercial jet, a Franco-British partnership, and Rolls-Royce engines which power around half the world's planes. British engineers are also critical to the success of the European Airbus. Britain's car industry too, so troubled in the 70s and 80s, is thriving again after a major reorganisation. Honda and Nissan have both invested heavily in plants in Britain, some of the most productive in Europe. But it's a sad fact that overall, engineering and manufacturing have been in decline in Britain for the last 30 years, despite the wealth of talent and dedication. Many of the British engineering companies were carrying a lot of historic baggage. They were large, they were unwieldy, the practices that had grown up in them were inefficient, and as a result, they got reputation for poor quality and particularly for industrial strife. Engineering and manufacturing does still make up about 60% of all UK exports and employs 3 million people. Yet with more investment, Britain's engineers could see another golden age and play a critical role in lifting Britain out of its current recession. Despite the downturn, some British companies are already establishing strong reputations in new industries like marine power. Aquamarine Power's Oyster and Palamis create energy through tidal movement, which can be plugged into the national grid. Marine engineering is just one of many great new technologies that this country has a lead in and which we can exploit. There's bioengineering, carbon capture, uh, great automotive uh, engineering at the moment. And if we exploit those really good technologies where we've got great intellectual property rights and can really provide that added value, uh, we've got a great future ahead of us if we exploit it. That's why the institution is launching its Engineered in Britain campaign. It aims to unite government, industry and academia with a shared vision to help support and invest in British engineering and manufacturing. Nobody would deny that we need a healthy, strong finance sector. It produces obviously an enormously important contribution to the British economy. But you also need a balanced economy. And we need to refocus on other areas of the economy, and in our case in particular, engineering, which has a huge amount to offer. It will take time, investment and a shared determination to grow the manufacturing and engineering sector once again. But the rewards could be great. Engineered in Britain, first of all, is about campaigning for a balanced economy. The second thing is about getting, mobilising ourselves together, all those engaged in delivering, financing uh, and researching engineering and delivering it to work together. And the third element is to ensure that the pipeline of young engineers, young technicians, is there not only for now, but for the future. As Britain is finding out, 
there is no alternative. If we want Britain to maintain its place in the world and to secure our future, engineering has to lay at the heart of that. And we need to campaign together as an engineering community to ensure that that happens. We have to engineer our future.